everyone, my name is Rory Clements and I work in VMware's end user computing team. And today I wanted to show you some 3D performance on a VDGA enabled Horizon desktop. So let's dive in. Here on the Mac, I've got a de local demo rig uh, that we're going to connect to. Let me just connect into a VDGA enabled Horizon desktop and we can uh, give you a quick overview of how things have been set up on the back end and then I can show you some product demos which are pretty cool. So uh, first things first, let me putty onto the ESX host that's running, uh, hosting this virtual desktop session. And uh, I can go on the host here and do an LSPCI uh, pipe grep minus I display. And that will show me the um, PCI devices that I could uh, potentially pass through, which are, which are of the display type. So you can see I've got a couple of NVIDIA K2 cores there, which means I've got a K2 card in the box, which has two GPU cores. And now I can uh, fire up the vSphere client and let's have a look at the uh, server and the VM configuration to show how this is passing through. So I'll just double check the host name uh, just to be sure. And it's NVIDIA K2 number one. And that's the host name of this VM that I'm running. So we can get the corresponding virtual machine up in vSphere, right? And we can see that's actually being hosted on demo ESX1, which is the host I just putted into. But let's have a look at it from the vSphere config side. And if you go in and have a look at the manage settings and you can go down to the PCI devices tab, which shows you the direct path IO configuration. And you can see I've got two GPU cores available uh, to pass through to a virtual machine. If I click edit, I can go into a slightly more detailed view. If I wanted to enable more devices for pass through here, I could. We say I've already gone ahead and enabled these two for pass through uh, it to my virtual machine. So uh, if I cl actually click on the device here, it'll tell me which VM is using it. And see this particular ID is using uh, uh, NVIDIA K uh, number two, and we want number one. So let me click that, get it loaded up in the back end, and I'll quickly show you what the VM configuration looks like. And then we can actually uh, dive in and double check that we've got other drivers and stuff installed. So in the on the VM here, I can just hit edit settings. And you'll see in the PCI device section, we've got the right ID, NVIDIA Grid K2 GPU passed through to the VM. So that's the first part. The second part that we have is that we actually need to install the NVIDIA native drivers inside the VM. So obviously I've already done that. Let's just do a quick double check with DXDiag. And I can show you that the, the full GPU is being passed through to the virtual machine. Let me just click on the display tab here. And you'll see that the device is an NVIDIA Grid K2. Manufacturers NVIDIA, it's using NVIDIA drivers and the full horsepower of the GPU is being passed through to the virtual machine. So we've got four gigs of video memory. Um, you know, we've got all, all the usual features here. Actually, if I, I can fire up and show you the NVIDIA control panel, which will uh, expose a few more settings here through as well. So in, in some environments, we have customers who are asking if you can actually mix shared and, and direct on the same host. And the answer is yes, of course you can. You can do this with NVIDIA K1 or K2 cards. You can pass through a single GPU from a card and use the other, the other, the other one for shared, or you can do uh, any kind of combination of the, of the two. So you know we have lots of customers who are actually you know doing a mixed deployment model. And as you can see here, you know all the usual stuff is exposed through to the VM. So I've actually got full control of the GPU. I can do you know right down to things like you know antistropic filtering settings and anti-aliasing and all that sort of stuff. But that's cool. So everything's running. We're, we're happy with that. Let's have a look at the applications that we've got installed. We've got Autodesk 3D Studio Max. I've got Maya and I've also got Cinema 4D, which are all pretty um, heavy duty content creation apps. And I've also got some NVIDIA specific demos here as well. But let's have a look firstly at 3D Studio Max. And I've got a, a pre-populated model in here, which is just a free sample of like a kind of hot rod uh, flatbed truck here. But um, what you can see is that if I actually want to move this around and manipulate and, and work on this object, the sort of user experience I get is, is pretty much native. So there's no real discernible difference between this and uh, you know, running this on, on a native machine with an NVIDIA card in. So you can see I can move the model around. I can you know, have a look at any particular view, zoom in and out if I want to. Let's have a look at these, uh, this um, kind of air, air intake unit here. And you can see actually it's that the software is actually rendering this up to a, to a full, full image. This isn't actually any kind of PC over IP build happening. Um, in terms of the PC over IP settings in the virtual machine, we've got built to lots lossless switched on. We're not doing any bandwidth capping or anything like that because for this kind of a desktop use case, you know, you're going to be looking at a LAN attached, uh, LAN attached user, and it's going to be for content creation. So really, we want to ensure the best possible experience. So you can see there, it renders all back to uh, to full quality, which is great. But it's all very nice and fluid, and you know everything's really responsive. That's 3D Studio Max. Let's have a look at Maya now. And in Maya, we've actually got a, a scene that was created for us for VMworld. And um, I can go in here and have a look at this. It's like a kind of forest scene with some objects in here that I can mess with. Um, you know, so if I select the tree here, I can move this around in 3D space and position it wherever I like. And again, you know, it's fully responsive. It's all being rendered in real time on the GPU. And the display coming back to me is, is as if I'm sat on a physical machine. So, um, you know, so it's all very, very good user experience. It's all fluid or everything. You know, there's no frame dropping or anything like that. You can see my kind of uh, you know my skills as a 3D modeler still leave a lot to be desired. So really, at the moment, my uh, I'm limited to just moving these kind of things around to show you what they look like. But you can see in here, you know, everything moves around. Everything's great. You know, it all looks really good. 
Um, another example of this is Cinema 4D, I've got running in here as well, uh, so let me fire this up. And again, this was some content that we created for uh, our VMworld show, and it's our, using our Defy uh, convention logo, but you'll see in here, if I just let me just make this full screen, and let me see, you can see in here, this is all being rendered in real time. Th uh, real time. We've got um, you know a little sphere in the background here that's exploding. I can pick up an element and shift it around as all this other stuff's going on. All this is being offloaded to the GPU as it would in a physical environment. You can see I can you know, move this around. Everything's still rendering. Everything's nice and smooth. And you know, really, again, you know, perfectly fluid, perfectly seamless user experience. And for the last part here, we've got um, a, a bit more of a creepy demo, which is the uh, uh, face Facebook real time capture from Nvidia. And this is actually a real-time capture that happened, um, and then it's it's actually being re replayed in real time on the on the Nvidia card. This isn't video. This is all being rendered live. So you can see here, I can actually go in. You know, if I zoom right in, I can actually see the pores in his skin there. You know, everything's everything's all looking you know really good and nice. We've got good high frame rate. Everything's really um, you know really fluid. If I change the background here, you see all the kind of dynamic lighting effects and his skin tones and all this stuff is all being offloaded on the card. And all we're doing is just firing this back down the line with PC over IP onto my uh, onto my client device here. So you can see I can kind of zoom in and out and can actually change his facial features. You can look at all this stuff that's being calculated in real time. The performance is really, really good. So you know, there's, there's no question that this is you know, perfectly equal to a physical PC experience. I'm going to shift him around here and let's uh, have a play with some other stuff. Let me you know, make his facial expressions change here or I can maybe even change the background again. You can see all the dynamic lighting's moving. If I can freeze frame him here quickly, and then I'll, uh, that's even more scary, so I'm going to get him talking again. And you see, you know, really, you know, the kind of use case for this is really on the content creation side, and we can do a nice mix of um, uh, VDGA and VSGA, which is the shared model. If you have people who are going to be creating content and consuming content, you can quite happily mix those two types of, of power users on a particular ESX host, uh, and as part of a as part of a broader Horizon deployment. So we actually have three models. We have the software-based model, which doesn't use any GPU acceleration. Then we have our NVIDIA Grid-based acceleration on shared and direct. So for any more information on this, check out the VMware website under End User Computing.